Good morning, everybody. Welcome to this week's episode of The County Seat. I'm your host, Chad Booth. Today, our topic is going to be about energy development in Utah. Now, a lot of you ask, what kind of impact does that have on me directly? Well, probably more than you think. The royalties that are generated, the taxes that are generated, help all communities across the state. And we will explain how that happens. But more importantly, the cost of energy has a direct impact on your personal daily life, whether it's drawing that extra hot tub of water or filling up at the gas station. We will start our conversation by talking about a board that distributes some of those royalty monies that come from energy development. It's called the CIB. A jar, a simple thing, but for Dilbert Peterson, an object with meaning. It used to belong to his mother. He eventually gave it to his granddaughter. He said it could be used to keep pins or change in, but then related it to what we choose to keep in our own lives. What we put into something, we can later get out. It's very similar to investing in your community. Now, counties provide a number of services to help seniors remain independent and at home. The public is most familiar with Meals on Wheels, but it's only part of a bigger system. Senior centers provide a place to gather and engage in a number of activities. It has a place for the older people to go to and have a nice time and be active still, instead of, instead of staying home. One of the roles that the senior centers play is, is socialization. It allows seniors the opportunity to leave their homes where they're for the most part alone. Like any public service, senior centers need funding. In the case of Carbon County, the Community Impact Board allocated the monies needed to build the facility. When a company extracts natural resources like coal or natural gas from public lands, there are royalties paid on the withdrawal of those resources. The Community Impact Board is charged with allocating those dollars back into the communities. We're the recipients of the mineral lease funds, which, which uh, comes in off the royalties on the gas wells, as well as the coal and the different minerals that uh, come within the county. It goes into the federal government takes, I believe, 50% of it, and then it comes back to the state, and I think we get about 25% of, of whatever comes back to the state, and that, that funds come back into the county where the county was, or where the money was, was generated. The fund is designed to help communities that are impacted by resource development. And that goes into water projects, sewer, transportation, or something else that benefits the community. Like on the senior center here, I mean, we, we ended up with a, a grant and a no interest loan from the CIB board. And the mineral lease funds that we receive or what pay back the loan on it. And it's not just for counties that produce the energy. Communities throughout the state can apply for these monies. And on a no interest, a low interest, or a grant type of application, they can receive better funding to be able to do some of those large projects that, that build up over time because monies aren't always there. Which brings us back to the jar. What you put in someday, you can take out. Or maybe, what you take out, you can put back in. For the county seat, I'm Derek Dowsett. The CIB, Community Impact Board, is really only one part of the puzzle as how energy has a positive impact on your life here in the state of Utah. We will delve into some of those other issues with our all-star panel when we come back. Stay with us here on the county seat. The Bear Lake Valley is a beautiful, rural, historical, and recreational paradise. The changing of the season makes now a great time to come our way to see the warm colors of fall in contrast with the cool blues of Bear Lake. Visit us in the Bear Lake Valley. Come for the ride, stay for the adventure. You go through the day-to-day -day repeating what you did yesterday. 
Don't you wish you could access that piece of your life that's missing? Find the beauty, serenity, family fun, or anything else that's missing from your life in the Cedar City Brian Head area. Gain access to your adventure, whether it's camping, hiking, the arts, festivals, or just a getaway. Visit cedarcityayl.com for details on all the adventures that you can access in scenic southern Utah. There is a place where young and old make connections. Where kids feel like grown-ups. And grown-ups feel like kids. There is a place where beauty arises in contrast. Where wonder is universal and laughter second nature. There is a place where friends find a future, families find each other, and feelings find their home. There is a place. There aren't a lot of places in this world where you can feel truly free and wild, where the horizon invites you to set off on adventure. In Tooele County, you'll find just that. Explore the Benson Grist Mill and step back in time. Find yourself on a trek through our canyons. <laughs> Tooele County. Experience endless horizons. Welcome back to the county seat. Our topic today is the economics of energy development in Utah a broad spectrum that covers new oil, uh, shale and oil developments, traditional oil development, and coal. Utah is a major energy state, and even though we sometimes don't act like it. Joining us for our roundtable discussion today, Greg Todd out of Duchesne County, who is involved in the oil industry. We have Irene Hansen, who's the economic development of Duchesne County, uh, the director there. And we have Commissioner Jay Potter from Carbon County, a county that has been known as an energy county for a number of years. Thank you all for joining us for this discussion. How is, how is industry and energy development changing over what it used to be? In my opinion, uh, people are understanding that it can be a lifetime uh, profession and they can stay in the area. Uh, I grew up in the oil when it first came in the 1970s and there was boom and bust, boom and bust. Uh, there's Right now there's hundreds of people have moved back because they feel it's a place for them to, to come and to uh, finish their, their life in Duchesne County. Has, has new technology really changed that as far as making this a more stable, extractive industry? The technology has changed unbelievably. Uh, I've been in an industry plus or minus 40 years. In the last 10 years, it's changed so much, I don't even know some of what's going on. It's just uh, something that's come with technology, with experimenting, understanding what's under the ground. And uh, the, the computer age helped change that also. So Irene, what, what's different as far as communities? Because you obviously as an economic development director, you're looking at communities and their stability as, as part of your job and your duty. Uh, how has that changed that way? You know, interestingly, I often call the Uinta Basin the envy of rural America. Unfortunately, statistics nationwide are that two out of every three rural counties across America are not going to make it. They're, they're in a decline, some cases even bankruptcy. In the Uinta Basin, as uh, Mr. Todd said, it's a, it's, a, it's a very exciting place to be and it is stable. We see families returning that have uh, had to leave Utah, had to leave the basin. Uh, we see children coming home for some of the best jobs that, that can be offered anywhere in the nation. We see educated people being drawn in, doctors, attorneys, accountants, uh, and uh, you know, it, it's an amazing thing to experience that prosperity and that hopefulness. And uh, we have been on a very good incline for really 20 years. Uh, it isn't the old boom and bust. We are diversifying, not uh, out of energy, but with the help of energy. I talk to businesses every day that only half of their revenue is coming uh, from the oil and gas industry, even industries directly linked to them in some cases. So that diversity is happening, be happening because of the prosperity that we have in our area. Well, Jay, from your perspective as a coal county, um, 
you know, coal has not been boom or bust. It's been a rock solid, no pun intended, a, <laughs> a, rock, a rock solid um, uh, driver of, of carbon in Emory County for a number of years. Um, you know, it's facing some challenges, not because of supply or availability of the energy, but from some from from political pressure. How how does that? And, and you have some business background as I well. Do. So. So how does that stability of, of energy have an impact on community and private businesses? Well, part of that cycle that we see that is called that boom and bust does happen in any, any industry, but particularly with coal, and I saw that as a, as a young man growing up in Carbon County, we were prone to those cycles, but a lot of that was based on supply and demand and the ability to even export uh, coal. But what's happened now is that we are actually mining more, more coal tonnage-wise because, again, of the technology that changes and brings about uh, safer conditions, more production, and so forth. And yet, we know that it, the market has declined. And part of that is definitely that war on coal and that, it, that people think it's a, a dirty producer. It's not. Our coal in our area is a, is a low sulfur coal. It's sought out after all over the world because it burns cleaner and, and the EPA regulations that are going on with coal right now are unreal uh, and unrealistic. Uh, we are already 30 and sometimes 40 percent cleaner as we burn coal than other places in the world, particularly outside the United States. So we've already exceeded the last level uh, that was imposed and the new level makes it very, very difficult. And the other thing that happens with our coal is that cost of energy, that electricity that all of us appreciate having a low cost. It attracts business to the state of Utah and to our communities, and it provides good, stable work, whether you're a miner or whether you're a, a power plant operator or a worker. And if you're a s specifically a, a supplier to those industries, you'd mentioned I do come from a business background, and my family, I'm a third generation small business owner, and so I bring that cycle and that knowledge of what happens. My specific trade was hotels. And as a supplier to those people that come in and needed to stay and needed to work in the community, not only my family, but the employees, the, the products that were purchased and sold within the area, it has a direct effect on our local, uh, our local economy, our local markets. And so energy is, is all around us. It's very important. Just because you don't have it in your black backyard doesn't mean that it's not important to you because whether you're going to ride your mountain bike or you're taking the bus to work in the city, believe me, there's somebody out there that's providing that energy for you to get there. When you were just talking about the fact you've had a climb for 20 years, some people would say, well, that's just another boom cycle and it's going to go bust. Mm -hmm. uh, are the indications from the resources out there look profitable enough or potentially uh, have so much potential that they are that they are going to be immune from fluctuations in market price, that energy will continue to develop? Energy, in my opinion, will continue to develop because in the basin, there's multiple zones okay. of oil and gas. And uh, with that, it, it gives opportunities just not in one area. You can go deeper, you can go shallower, you can go directional, you can go horizontal. All that's new technology that wasn't there 15 years ago. People have a better perspective of what a, a boom and, and bust cycle is, and they've learned to, to fight that and to understand how it, how it works. And they're careful with their money. They try to look at things in a long-term perspective instead of the short-term perspective. With the new technology of extraction, do those fluctuations in market price have less impact in the communities because of the resource if the regulatory environment is correct? You know, one thing, I, and I can finish up this segment with this, and that is our companies are all in. They're not there short term. They have invested in people. They've invested in partnerships. They are all in. When you're all in, you don't leave when the going gets tough. They have a plan, and they are all in for Utah. Okay, well, that's a great place to stop for a break. Thank you for a good, <laughs> good hat hanger for the end of the segment. We'll be right back with the county seat. We're talking about the economics of energy development in Utah. We'll return after this commercial break. 
There are a couple great things about the Uinta Basin. One is it's still small, it's community. That it makes you feel like when you go somewhere, you know everybody. When you know your neighbor, and your neighbor knows you, and you can trust each other, people look out for one another. I grew up in the Uinta Basin, and I think that it's a good place to raise a family. So we packed up our three kids, and here we came to Uinta County, and what a great place it was. It's not too big, it's not too small. And, and it has a lot to offer that you just don't get in the big city anymore. ATV, check. Four-wheel driving, check. Bouldering, check. Mountain biking, check. Hiking, check. River rafting, check. Adventure is about more than just crossing activities off of a list, but hey, if you can find a place that gives you everything you're looking for, all the better. In Emory County, you'll find the San Rafael Swell, trails, lakes, and the small town hospitality you're looking for. San Rafael Country, in the heart of Utah. Visit us and check something off your list. What would you do with an extra day in Utah Valley? Explore the Wasatch Mountains? Snap a family photo at Bridal Veil Fall. Cool off on Utah Lake or the Provo River. No matter what you're searching for, you can find it in Utah Valley. Bring everyone together. Kanab, base camp for your Southern Utah adventures. You belong in Kanab. Welcome back to the county seat. Our topic today is the economics of energy development in Utah. We're blessed in this state that we have all of the available assets of, of current energy. We've got alternative energy out in the West Desert. We've got, we've got thermal, we've got wind, we've got solar, we've got natural gas, we've got oil, we've got oil shale, we've got oil sands, <laughs> and the big gorilla in the room, coal. And they're all here within the boundaries of our state. Let's talk about how it spills over into uh, the, the broader economies of the state. Jay, I want to start this question with you because you are a member of the Community Impact Board and you serve on that. And you, you have counties come to you all the time that aren't energy producing counties looking to tap into some of that royalty money. How does that whole structure tie into non-producing counties? In, in, in very round numbers, uh, any mineral that's produced on federal lands obviously is federal royalty. The federal government keeps 52 percent of those revenues and then they turn the other 48 percent to the state. The state basically splits that 48 percent between the producing county and the rest of it goes into basically the CIB, or the Community Impact Board. And so that is how the state of Utah benefits every citizen benefits because of mineral extraction. And with the, the Community Impact Board or the CIB funds, those reach into non-producing counties, non-producing non cities, and, and so it's a great resource for water and sewer and it's Kanab City Park was a CIB mm -hmm. project. Um, uh, water treatment plants in Garfield County, I, I seem to recall, right. uh, being a, a grant or, or a loan uh, that came out of CIB. Duchesne has had some fantastic water projects that are going on right now and, and the Uinta Basin as a whole benefits from that but every county does and to be a producer the, the Community Impact Board is targeting those basically to improve our communities where we are producers where the impact is there because it does take a lot to keep the energy business in business. So Irene let's let's look back from an economic development standpoint if we take those royalties off the table that, that CIB is already spreading across the state uh, let's let's talk about the the tax base for a community, or I mean, any one of you can address this, uh, as far as the energy production and and how much healthier your tax base is as a result of it. Well, as a Utahn, our tax base is much healthier because of energy production in the state of Utah. You know, if you have great wages, all of the income tax goes to the state of Utah. When we do our shopping, five out of every six cents goes to the state of Utah. There's severance taxes that's charged on oil and gas production in the basin 
that all goes to the state of Utah, and then mineral lease uh, that is on production just on federal land. So we're talking an enormous amount, and of course the beneficiary is, the, is certainly individuals, but also, again, the taxpayers in the state of Utah, just an unbelievable amount of prosperity uh, and um, uh, abilities that, that this gives our state to continue to progress and become a leader in the nation. We didn't mention the production that comes off from the CITLA lands, the school yes. and institutional trust lands. Those, pr those revenues that are produced on them benefit the, the children of Utah. And so that extraction helps them in multiple ways. Yes, uh, my, my father was a principal in the education business, and, uh, and I have several friends that are too, and they say, well, I actually graduated in education, but uh, they said, they always say, how's the oil business? How's the oil business? Because okay. it affects the school so dramatically in our area. Uh, and that's, and th there's another point too, and, and maybe you can uh, kind of point us in that direction. Um, how much of an impact does the cost or does oil production have in a close proximity to its distribution? And I think maybe we'll save that for our next block and we'll come up and we'll start with that question. We're watching the Unlimited opportunity for adventure? It's all about knowing where to look. ATV adventures, rock crawling events, art festivals, and wildlife events. The opportunities are limitless. Pick your adventure in Millard County. Why is it that environmental protection and economic development are often placed at odds with each other? In Duchesne County, they have both. Here, modern industry and resource development go hand in hand with some of the most pristine wilderness in the Western United States. A strong economy balanced with a lifestyle of exploration and discovery. But don't take my word for it. Go visit them, Duchesne County. Close enough for business. Far enough, get away. Color, it's something that can be seen. But have you ever wanted to reach out and touch it? Experience it. In San Juan County, Utah color comes to life like nowhere else on earth. Color can be more than an abstract. Color can be your gateway to a new world. Visit San Juan County and explore the past, present, and future in a way that you've only dreamed of San Juan County. Color. Your experience. In a place that is beyond words, there is nothing to be said. Except, take your time in Bryce Canyon Country. Next, have you experienced diarrhea in the last two mm. weeks? Did you shower today mm. with soap? Yeah. Did you wash well? Mm. Down there and back there? Uh, go see Olga. <laughs> Welcome back to the county seat. Our topic today is the economics of energy development in the state of Utah. We were talking through the break uh, about um, this, this cost or impact on a personal level to people because uh, again there will be some people who will say well I'm not making that connection with the fact that you know the taxes are a little bit better because we've got these royalties and taxes and severance taxes coming off and I'm not really connecting with and I don't care what happens in Duchesne or Carbon County or Uinta County and of course I would never be one to say that but there might be some who say that but but on that personal level uh, you know does this have an impact to the guy that lives in Holiday Utah and drives to work every day and doesn't have any other connection he thinks with with the energy producing counties I know that the price of gasoline in Holiday is a lot cheaper than the price of gasoline in Roosevelt, Utah, because the refineries are close. We bring it out, they have the opportunity to, to have it refined, and the, it's cheaper here than probably anywhere in the state. 
Does that apply to other other resources of energy as well? It really does. If you look at the cost of uh, of power of electrical power throughout the state of Utah, uh, that p most of that power is being generated by coal-fired power plants. And if you do away with those coal-fired power plants, I can guarantee your power rates are going to double or triple. Well, so it has a big impact on you. That maybe more so than on personal, it could have an it could actually dampen economic growth, could it not? Absolutely. I mean, because you look at what attracts people to the state of Utah, not only the quality of living, our beautiful scenery, but it is the ability to be in business and do it economically, and utilities are a big factor in that. You know, in the Uinta Basin, uh, we're we're really proud of the fact that we aren't just about energy. In my opinion, it's kind of the foundation that makes a lot of other things possible. But you know, we have the largest uh, piece of wilderness in the state of Utah is in Duchesne County, the High Uintas. We have people come from all around the world. Uh, and we get to visit people who are coming out to enjoy the splendor and the, and the uh, relaxation, all of the fun things. A lot of property owners come to Western Duchesne County. I'm sure your audience will identify with this because we have literally thousands of property owners that, that own their two or five acres. But again, e everyone who comes to Duchesne County or Uinta County benefits when they come out from the energy extraction industry. And remember, everything is done with such an eye, number one, to technology, number two, to safety, and number three to the environment. And uh, that is uh, when, you know, I said earlier, the companies are all in. And that means they're all in when it comes to doing things correctly. And um, uh, that's why we're very proud of our industry. They're great supporters uh, to our communities, make a lot of things happen. We have one evening in Roosevelt where we raise about $400,000 for over 40 charities in one evening in the little town of Roosevelt. We do that because of the, the generosity of the supply companies that do business with the production companies. It's their way of giving back. Uh, you know, there's, there's a perception that the management, the, the management of, of energy extraction comes from a different state and that the on-the-ground management decisions are being made by remote, non-living people. Are you finding that that trend is changing? Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, we have lots of local people that have grown up in that area that are managing. Uh, they look at this as their home and they want it to be the best that it is. And so they, they spend their money there. So that kind of ties into that all-in thing is that you're finding more of the management level decisions that are being made are being made by people who are living in the community that will have the impact of their decision? They're very engaged. They're very charitable oriented. I mean, they're willing to give. They're willing to be part of the community and, and that is the buy-in, whether it's coal, oil, gas, whatever that is. We benefit greatly because those companies are there. Well, we need to take this moment to kind of reflect on this, and I would urge you to share this episode with your friends, get onto social media, have them watch it. It will be available right after this airing uh, by Monday or Tuesday online. Um, please make a point to let people know about the county seat. Thank you for making it into the studio to participate with us today. Thank you for taking the time to watch it, and we'll look for you next time on the county seat. If you like this video, then we invite you to subscribe to our channel, The County Seat. You can do that here. And we invite you to share with your friends. We also invite you to get all the latest up-to-date information by following us on our social media channels. And if all else fails, make sure that you watch The County Seat Sunday morning at 8.30 right here on ABC4 Utah.